I am Thomas Robert Maltus. I was born on February 14, 1766, near Docking, Surrey, England. I am the sixth of the seven children of Henrietta Catherine Grantham and Daniel Maltus. To be honest, I was born into a prosperous family at the age of 18. I entered Jesus College and graduated with first class ordered in mathematics. At that time, I was only 22 years old. After that, I further pursued my studies in Masters of Arts and graduated at the age of 25. In 1793, I was elected as the Fellow of Jesus Church and then became a curate in the parish of Oakwood Chapel in Wooden, Surrey. In 1797, I had responded to holy orders and served for the Lord. Meanwhile, I was super interested in population. I had accumulated data regarding birth, death, age of marriage, and childbearing, and economic factors contributing to the longevity. Ultimately, I found the Statistical Society of London. Well, today is November 14, 1834. Let me share with you my contribution to the world. I became a philosopher and broadly believed that humanity will continue growing and tilting toward utopianism. When I was 30, I have written my first track, The Crisis, a politic critic of paid administration. But at my father's advice, I never published it. One year later, and created by William Godwin Jr. In Godwin's work, the head progress high fertility had been considered an economic advantage since it increased the number of workers available in the economy. I had debated a lot with my interminable intellectual father about Godwin's perfectibility of man thesis. In the age of 32, something burning inside me to set down my ideas on the paper and publish it with anonymous pamphlet with title An Essay on the Principle of Population. My main contribution was to highlight the relationship between population and food supply. My work had excited a wide public attention. In fact, I disagree with Godwin's statement. In my opinion, my Malthusian doctrine, population grows at a rate greater than the means to feed it, and if unchecked, the world's population will double every 25 years. Basically, human population will increase geometrically, while food production will increase arithmetically. The perfectibility of society will always be out of reach. Despite having advanced technology introduced into the agricultural sector and other development of sufficient land for crops, nations' food production will improve the well-being of the society, but nations only enjoy temporary happiness because it led to increase of population growth. This will restore original per capita production level. Increased population was expected to lead to a glut in the supply of land. Ultimately, a fall in price will be paid to the labor. Meanwhile, the growing demand for food and other provisions surely will rise the cost of survival. With low purchasing power and high living standard, I promise that the population will stand still. However, population only increased during that time. People will suffer from poverty again. I view poverty as humanity's inescapable law. In my own perspective, only two strong checks can keep carrying capacity in life. First is positive checks, starvation, disease, and naturally cause to death. And the second preventive checks by moral restraints, which are delayed of marriage and sexual abstinence. While in contrast to moral restraints are abortion and infanticide. My theory about the population will stand still when living standard gets higher wasn't valid during that time. I boldly speculated that this must only be occurred in the middle of the 19th century. And I believe that when people become more educated, likely in the 20th century, they will automatically pick up my concept. 
In the age of 34, I published a pamphlet arguing the quantity theory. Quantity theory states that general price level of goods and services is proportional to the money supply. However, in my opinion, rising prices of goods and services are followed by increase of the quantity supplied and of money. Once again, when I was 48 years old, I debated on Kohn's law. In the early 19th century, Parliament set high tariffs on the imports of wheat and other grains. I had a third pamphlet namely observations on the effects of the Kohn laws, which disagree on the high tariffs, as the rising price would cost less imports and certainly damage on the nation's food supply. This will collapse free trade due to the increase of the tax charge. But in later years, I agreed with Condos. I came up with another version of Frankie. Rounds of opinion on the policy of restricting importation of foreign corn to support the implementation of corn laws. The imposed tariffs will stimulate domestic farmers to cultivate less productive land and expand home grain production to satisfy the demand of the country. Citizens will rely less on imports and enjoy lower domestic corn price. This will slowly foster agricultural exports and generate huge revenues for the country. In the age of 1815, when I was 49 years old, I developed differential theory of rent with my published work namely inquiry. In my opinion, I suggest that rent is due to nature's productivity. Others may claim that the rent is the cost of production. In my opinion, rent is enabled by three facts. Firstly, agricultural production surplus. Secondly, wage fertility dynamics guarantee that the price of corn would remain above its cost of production. And thirdly, the scarcity of fertile land. The final winner for the rent falls to the landlord. Not so short. Rent is the price determinant, not the price of determinant. I am influenced by Adam Smith.